If you are new to VOR navigation, I recommend you start with Garmin G1000 VOR navigation example one, which will also provide additional videos to watch to help aid you in understanding VOR navigation. In this video, we are going to use a VOR to navigate from one airport to another. We will take off from the Mexico Memorial Airport and fly to the Hallsville VOR on the 260 degree radial. One point of clarification I forgot to mention earlier in the VOR navigation series is that there is an inbound radial which is opposite of the radial you set the CDI needle to. In this example, the opposite of 260 degrees is 80 degrees, so technically we are heading inbound on the 80 degree radial, but I've been ignoring that. I do talk about the inbound radial more in an older series of VOR videos, so you can check those out as well. Sky Vector looks a little off on this in the image here, but if you think to the VOR, and you extend the line through the VOR to the other side, as we've been doing in the other videos, you can see the line goes through to 260 degrees. The line I've drawn is more accurate than what Sky Vector is showing on the two side of the VOR. Then on the from leg of the VOR, we will fly from Hallsville to the Jesse Vertel Memorial Airport. And I hope I pronounced the name right. We will fly there on the 243 degree radial. So what we will do in this flight is set NAV1 to the Hallsville VOR frequency of 114.2 and use NAV1 on the to and from legs of the flight to get to our destination. So first we will set NAV1 to the Hallsville frequency of 114.2 using the dual NAV knob. Then we will use the NAV frequency transfer key to move the frequency from standby to active. We will use the CDI soft key to go from GPS mode to VOR1 mode, which corresponds to NAV1. Next, we will use the coarse barrel knob to rotate the CDI needle to 260 degrees, and then we will take off. Notice the small arrow indicates to, confirming we are going to the Hallsville VOR. We have taken off and can see that the course is to our left as indicated by the D-bar. Initially, I target 240 degrees using autopilot and the heading bug, and the D-bar does gradually move back to center. I'm a little late on making the turn back to the right, so the D-bar goes slightly to the right, indicating the 260 degree course is now slightly on my right. So I turn past 260 degrees to approximately 265 degrees or so to try and get the D-bar back to center. I decide I need to go even further right to 270 degrees or so. I've talked about how you have to make adjustments for winds to stay on course, and that's what I'm doing here. I've settled on 268 degrees as the VOR comes to view on the inset map. Now notice the D-bar starts to swing more rapidly as we get close to the Hallsville VOR indicating the sensitivity is increasing. As we cross, notice we switch from the to side of the VOR to the from side as indicated by the small arrow.
We now need to twist the coarse barrel knob to set our course to the from radial of 243 degrees. When we do this, we can see the D-bar is to the left of center, indicating the course is to our left. So we will turn past 243 degrees to get the D-bar back to center. Initially, I target 230 degrees to see what will happen. You can see that the D-bar is coming rapidly back to center, so I turn back to the right. But again, I should have responded a little more quickly, so the D-bar goes a little off to the right, indicating the course is now on my right. So I will go past 243 degrees to about 251 degrees to see what will happen. I eventually settle upon 250 degrees, which means I'm crabbing to the right of the 243 degree course because of the winds, so I don't get blown off course. Notice the Jesse Vertel Memorial Airport, identified as KVER on the inset map, comes into view confirming we are navigating correctly. Subscribe to this channel to learn more.